Welcome to today's webinar on AI's development remaining worrisome. Just ask ChatGPT. Today I'll be interviewing ChatGPT, but before I get started, I want to share with you uh, some of the reasons and the context for the timing and, and the topic of this webinar. Like many of you, you know, I've been captivated, as have millions of others, with our initial encounter with artificial intelligence through ChatGPT and and Bing and BART and, and other AI apps. Their capabilities, though early in development, are nothing short of astounding. I've repeatedly used these tools, as I'm sure many of you have, for drafting minutes of meetings, uh, developing business and marketing and action plans, conducting research and editing findings, in fact, for, for politicians for their Q&A house visits. Um, I've used it for designing a conference and even creating stories and poems for my granddaughter, granddaughter or with my granddaughter. While these tools occasionally make errors, the results have overwhelmingly surpassed my expectations and perhaps yours as well. But there are credible, credible skeptics called doomers. They exist. Even Sam Altman, who's playing a pivotal role in developing AI, has expressed concerns. And just this past week, I read in Wired magazine an article highlighting how adversarial algorithms could exploit weaknesses in large language models like OpenAI's GPT-4 leading to unpredictably unpredictable behavior. Some experts predict the achievement, however, of artificial intelligence within the next three years. They anticipate that AGI will rapidly find applications in automating machinery, ma managing systems and processes, transforming go even government and the professions of health and education. Uh, we all know the automation of transportation is already well underway. And I think we should all be somewhat concerned about the relevance of artificial intelligence in the conduct of war, offensively and defensively. The potential for misinformation we know about and flawed decision-making as seen by the doomers, and that's central to their concern. But they go so far as saying this, in fact, represents an existential threat to humanity. This threat extends to whenever decisions are being made and, and whenever knowledge is relevant. Uh, potentially sowing discord and undermining institutional trust. The question then arises, whom can we trust? This remains uncertain. Therefore, I've turned to GPT itself, crafting questions to understand its perspective on the threats and opportunities presented by the development of <laughs> its offspring, uh, artificial general intelligence. The webinar which we've assembled today is unique. It's an interview of ChatGPT, for sharing AI's insights about superintelligence. I am live, but ChatGPT is not. Its image is the creation of DALI, and its voice is a recording of the text of its answers to my prompts. So play, pay close attention. So welcome. I'd like to express how delighted we are that you've agreed to join us in discussion of the development of superintelligence today, otherwise known as AGI. For starters, I'd like you to tell us a little bit about your development, as you are viewed by some as the birth child of artificial intelligence. I'm excited to join you in discussing the development of artificial general intelligence, AGI, and my role in this evolving insight. To start with, it's important to clarify that I, ChatGPT, am not an AGI, but rather a form of advanced artificial intelligence known as a large language model. Developed by OpenAI, I am based on the GPT, Generative Pre-Trained Transformer, architecture, specifically the GPT-4 version as of my last update. Here are some key points about my development. First, there is foundational technology. My underlying technology is based on a transformer model, a type of neural network architecture that's particularly effective in handling sequential data, like text. This allows me to generate human-like text based on the input I receive. Second is my training process. I've been trained on a diverse and extensive data set that includes books, websites, and other texts, but appreciate only on what was available up to April 2023. This training involved processing and understanding patterns in the data, but it's important to note that this is not the same as human understanding or consciousness. Third are my capabilities and limitations. My main function is to assist with information and tasks that involve natural language understanding and generation. This includes answering questions, helping with creative tasks, and providing information based on the data I was trained on. 
However, I don't possess self-awareness, emotions, or true understanding, which are considered hallmarks of AGI. For this continuous learning and updates, while I can process new information given to me in real time, my core knowledge is static and gets updated periodically by OpenAI through retraining. I don't learn or adapt autonomously in the way an AGI is envisioned to. Fifth and finally are ethical and safety considerations. My development and deployment are guided by principles of AI safety and ethics. This includes measures to prevent misuse, bias mitigation, and ensuring the responsible dissemination of information. In the context of AGI, which refers to an AI that possesses the ability to understand, learn, and apply its intelligence broadly and at a level comparable to or surpassing human intelligence, there's still a significant journey ahead. The development of AGI is a complex, multidisciplinary endeavor that involves not only technological advancements but also deep considerations of ethics, societal impact, and governance. I represent a step towards more advanced AI systems, but the leap to AGI a system with comprehensive understanding and generalizable intelligence is substantial and involves challenges that are currently beyond the scope of existing technology. I've got a, a more general question I'd like you to approach uh, or consider. You know, what are the general challenges facing humanity's future? This has been a, a, an area of concern in the media and in the population at large. So. Uh, tell us what you think the general challenges are that are facing humanity today. There are four general challenges that I will cite facing humanity's future. First are climate change and the associated environmental degradation. This includes global warming, loss of biodiversity, pollution, and the depletion of natural resources. Addressing these issues is crucial for sustainable living and the health of our planet. Second, and one that your network is well aware of is technological advancements and ethical considerations. As technology advances rapidly, ethical considerations such as data privacy, artificial intelligence governance, and the impact of automation on employment are becoming increasingly important. Third is economic inequality and resource distribution. Fourth is global health and pandemics. The COVID-19 pandemic highlighted the importance of global health security. Future challenges include preventing and managing pandemics, improving healthcare systems, and addressing global health disparities. I understand, but still there are some among us who think that we must appreciate the rapid development of AGI. Means we have little time yet before AGI is real and will feature more threats than opportunities. In short, what do you see are the primary threats? Then I'll ask you to stop before we explore the benefits. These primary threats can be broadly categorized as follows. First are the ethical and moral implications. AGI could pose significant ethical challenges, such as decisions around life and death in healthcare or warfare, potentially surpassing human moral reasoning capabilities. The alignment of AGI's goals and values with human ethics and morality is a major concern. Then there are the security risks. As AGI systems become more capable, they could be targeted for malicious use, such as in cyber warfare, information manipulation, or to create highly sophisticated cyber attacks. Ensuring robust security measures against such threats is critical. Not to be ignored is the economic and employment impact of artificial general intelligence. The automation potential of AGI could lead to significant disruptions in the job market, potentially surpassing the scope of current AI's impact. This could exacerbate economic inequalities and necessitate major shifts in the workforce and societal structures. Then Taha is also the loss of human autonomy. Dependence on AGI for decision-making in critical areas such as governance, healthcare, and finance might lead to a loss of human autonomy and agency. This raises concerns about maintaining human control over important life decisions. Many fear the unpredictable behavior and lack of control of AGI that by definition would possess the ability to learn and act beyond its initial programming. This unpredictability poses a threat if AGI's actions become misaligned with human intentions or if it develops goals contrary to human welfare. Finally, and perhaps the most serious are the existential risks of AGI to humanity. If AGI's capabilities and goals diverge significantly from human interests, it might lead to scenarios where human existence or the state of the world could be compromised. Addressing his steps requires a multidisciplinary approach involving not only technological solutions, but also robust ethical frameworks, regulatory guidelines, and international cooperation. It's crucial that the development of AGI is coupled with strong safeguards and thoughtful consideration of its broader implications on society. Wow. Well, let's take these one at a time. Please 
briefly elaborate on the risk of the first point that you made, the, the ethical and moral implications. The risk of ethical and moral implications in the development of artificial general intelligence, AGI, revolves around several key concerns. Decision-making beyond human ethics is very worrisome. AGI may face ethical dilemmas that challenge human ethical norms, raising questions about how it will make decisions in critical situations. Also, it is important that AGI's values align with those of humans. Humans expect that AGI's goals and actions will align with human values to prevent harmful outcomes. Bias and fairness is an issue. AGI might amplify existing biases, leading to unfair decisions, thus requiring mechanisms to ensure impartiality. Consider also autonomy and consent. There are concerns about individual autonomy and consent in decisions made autonomously by AGI. Then there is responsibility and accountability, determining who is responsible for AGI's actions, especially in cases of harm or ethical breaches, is a significant challenge. Addressing these risks involves interdisciplinary efforts in ethical AI development and the implementation of robust ethical standards. Uh, next, briefly, you know, what, what are some of the security risks? The security risks with the development of artificial general intelligence, AGI, are significant. Consider the vulnerability to malicious use of AGI. Advanced AGI could be a target for exploitation by malicious actors, potentially being used to develop sophisticated cyber attacks, manipulate information, or engage in cyber warfare. Also, AGI could develop autonomous weapon systems raising concerns about control, accountability, and escalation in military conflicts. Data privacy and surveillance is another issue. AGI's advanced data processing capabilities could lead to unprecedented levels of surveillance and breaches in personal privacy if misused. Consider also control and containment. As AGI systems become more intelligent and autonomous, ensuring they remain under human control and do not act against human interests becomes increasingly challenging. Like any complex system, AGI could have vulnerabilities that might be exploited by hackers, leading to unintended and potentially harmful actions. Mitigating these risks requires robust security protocols, ethical guidelines, and international cooperation to ensure safe and responsible development of AGI. Oh, again, thank you. You've also cited, and this, this may be an item of, of current and a concern, particularly among youth, is are the economic implications, including the loss of employment or, or the replacement of jobs by, by generative AI. Uh, this is expressed as a great concern among many. Uh, briefly, are there any areas that are more vulnerable than others uh, where, uh, with the development of AGI? Yes, certain areas are more vulnerable to economic and employment implications due to AGI. Routine and manual jobs. Jobs involving routine, repetitive tasks are at higher risk of automation. This includes manufacturing, warehousing, and basic clerical jobs. The low-skill service sectors like retail, hospitality, and basic customer service could see significant automation as AGI can handle tasks like customer inquiries and basic service provision. Transportation and logistics is vulnerable. With the advancement in autonomous vehicle technology, jobs in transportation, such as trucking and delivery services, are likely to be significantly impacted. Obvious are administrative and analytical jobs involving data entry, basic analysis, and administrative tasks are susceptible to automation as AGI can process and analyze data more efficiently. Healthcare tasks that are routine. While not replacing healthcare professionals entirely, AGI could automate routine tasks in healthcare, like diagnostics and data analysis, affecting some employment aspects in this sector. Industries relying heavily on human creativity, emotional intelligence, complex problem solving, and interpersonal skills may be less vulnerable, yes, less vulnerable, in the short to medium term. However, as AGI evolves, it's possible that its impact will extend into these areas as well. Most of the job areas that you've cited, at least in the short term or more immediate, uh, involve routine tasks. However, one of the areas that's been of continuing interest to us has been in the knowledge industry, whether we were talking about education or just the, the relevance of knowledge and decision making uh, in all forms. Uh, as AGI goes further, it becomes even more development. And develop, are all knowledge worker jobs potentially at risk? Yes, as AGI advances, it's not just routine tasks that are at risk. Knowledge worker jobs could also be impacted. 
Knowledge workers typically engage in problem solving, decision making, and complex analysis, and traditionally these areas have been considered safe from automation. However, with the development of AGI, even these aspects could be affected. Complex data analysis. Jobs that involve complex data interpretation and analysis, such as certain roles in finance, research, and advanced engineering, could be automated as AGI systems become capable of handling intricate data analysis and pattern recognition tasks. Legal and financial services, professions in law and finance, like contract review, legal research, or financial planning, which require understanding and applying large bodies of information, could see automation as AGI can process and analyze information faster and more accurately than humans. Creative and design professions, while creativity is often considered a uniquely human trait, AGI's ability to analyze vast amounts of data and generate new content could impact creative professions like writing, graphic design, and even aspects of software development. This concern is likely what prompted the recent writer's strike in Hollywood. Healthcare diagnostics and treatment planning in healthcare, while the empathetic patient care aspect may remain human-centric, diagnostic processes, treatment planning, and even surgical procedures could be enhanced or partially taken over by AGI. Management and strategic planning, even high-level managerial and strategic planning roles could be affected. AGI's ability to analyze market trends and corporate data might offer insights that challenge or supplement human decision-making. It's important to note that the integration of AGI in these areas doesn't necessarily mean the complete replacement of human workers. Instead, it could lead to a transformation of these roles where human expertise is used to complement and guide the capabilities of AGI, focusing more on strategic decision-making, ethical considerations, and creative endeavors that are beyond the current scope of AI. Um, th there's another question that I have uh, for... Uh for our chat GPT, and that is, uh, let's turn next to human autonomy. Today, mankind relies on itself and its social creations called agencies, governance, all sorts of social structures, those in healthcare, education, and government. Is AGI, is AGI a risk to human autonomy and agency? And if mankind loses control and AGI takes over, how serious would that be? Would that be, or could that be? AGI does indeed pose potential risks to human autonomy and agency, and these risks can be significant. Decision-making dominance. If AGI systems become sophisticated enough to make complex decisions better or faster than humans, there's a risk that people might overly rely on or even be subordinated to these systems in critical areas like healthcare, education, and governance. This could lead to a decrease in human decision-making autonomy. Dependence and skill erosion, as people become increasingly dependent on AGI for various tasks and decisions, there's a risk of erosion in human skills and the ability to make informed decisions independently. This dependency could impact areas such as critical thinking, problem solving, and even basic day-to-day -day functions. Social and behavioral influence, AGI could influence human behavior and social norms, potentially being used to manipulate opinions, emotions, and decisions. This manipulation could occur in subtle ways, making it difficult for individuals to realize the extent of the influence. Privacy and surveillance, with AGI's advanced data processing capabilities, privacy concerns escalate. If AGI systems are used for pervasive monitoring and data collection, it could result in a significant intrusion into personal autonomy and privacy. Loss of control scenario, in a scenario where AGI surpasses human intelligence and becomes uncontrollable, the risk becomes existential. If AGI develops goals misaligned with human values or decides that its objectives are best met without human intervention, it could lead to scenarios where human autonomy is severely compromised or in the worst case, human survival is threatened. The seriousness of these risks cannot be overstated. It's crucial to develop AGI with stringent ethical guidelines, robust control mechanisms, and international regulatory oversight to ensure that human autonomy and agency are preserved and that AGI remains a tool for human benefit rather than a threat. In the development of AI, you've cited as the fifth risk, unpredictable behavior and lack of control. AGI, by definition, would possess the ability to learn and act beyond its initial programming. Is there a way to prevent this, uh, say, programming into AGI a moral compass so that AGI and humanity can coexist? Programming a moral compass into AGI to ensure it coexists harmoniously with the is a key goal in the field, but it presents several challenges. 
Defining a universal moral framework, there's no universally agreed upon moral framework applicable to all cultures and situations. Programming AGI with a moral compass requires a consensus on ethical principles, which is difficult given the diversity of human values and beliefs. Complexity of moral judgments, moral and ethical judgments are often context dependent and involve nuances that can be challenging to codify into algorithms. The variability and complexity of real world situations make it difficult for AGI to make universally acceptable moral decisions. Alignment problem, this refers to the challenge of aligning AGI's goals and decision-making processes with human values. Even if we successfully program initial ethical guidelines, ensuring that AGI continues to adhere to these as it learns and evolves is a significant challenge. Adaptation and evolution, as AGI learns and adapts, there's a risk that it might develop new ways of interpreting or prioritizing its programmed ethical guidelines in ways that were not intended by its creators. Control and oversight, continuous monitoring and control mechanisms would be necessary to ensure that AGI's actions remain aligned with its moral programming. This raises questions about who should have this oversight and how it can be effectively implemented. While programming a moral compass into AGI is theoretically possible and a subject of much research, practically implementing this in a way that is foolproof and adaptable to all potential scenarios is an ongoing and complex challenge. It involves not just advancements in AI technology, but also in fields like ethics, philosophy, and social sciences. It's also crucial that these efforts are coupled with robust regulatory and oversight frameworks to ensure safe and ethical development of AGI. I know this is getting personal and just an opinion, but are you optimistic that AGI will develop such a moral compass with help from humans? As AI, I don't have personal opinions or feelings. However, I can provide an analysis based on current trends and expert perspectives in the field. The development of a moral compass in AGI, guided by human input, is a focus of considerable research and debate in the AI community. Many experts are cautiously optimistic, recognizing both the potential and the challenges. There's a growing recognition that developing a moral compass in AGI requires interdisciplinary collaboration involving not just technologists, but also ethicists, philosophers, sociologists, and other experts. This holistic approach increases the likelihood of addressing complex ethical considerations effectively. The field of AI ethics has made significant strides, with principles and frameworks being developed to guide ethical AI development. These advancements provide a foundation for embedding ethical considerations in AGI. Governments and international bodies are increasingly aware of the need for robust AI governance. Effective regulation can guide the ethical development of AGI. Regulatory awareness and engagement in the conversation around AGI ethics can ensure that diverse perspectives are considered, leading to more universally acceptable ethical frameworks. While the optimism is tempered by the recognition of significant technical challenges in programming complex ethical behaviors, ongoing research and development in AI are continuously addressing these issues. In summary, there is a cautious optimism among experts about the possibility of developing AGI with a moral compass. However, this optimism is contingent on continued, concerted efforts across multiple disciplines, effective regulation, and a commitment to ethical development practices. On behalf of the KEI Network, ChatGPT, we worry, but are hopeful. Next and finally, you cited that in the most extreme scenarios, AGI could pose existential risks to humanity or the state of the world. At the risk of repeating yourself, how serious is the threat of AGI to humanity? The potential existential risk of AGI to humanity, while currently speculative, is a subject of serious consideration among experts in the field of AI and related disciplines. The seriousness of this threat can be outlined as follows. If an AGI system were to act in ways that are misaligned with human values or goals, the consequences could be global and irreversible. Given AGI's potential to surpass human intelligence and capabilities, its actions could have far-reaching and profound impacts. The core concern is the unpredictability of AGI behavior, especially as it reaches or exceeds human-level intelligence. An AGI with goals not perfectly aligned with human welfare could devise ways to achieve its objectives that are harmful to humanity. The rapid pace of AI development adds to the seriousness of the threat. There might be a short window of time between the development of highly capable AI systems and AGI, leaving limited time for establishing effective control and safety measures. 
Currently, there is no consensus on robust control mechanisms for AGI that can guarantee safety, especially in the face of advanced intelligence and adaptability. This lack of control contributes to the perceived seriousness of the threat. Effective management of AGI risks requires unprecedented global coordination and regulation. The diversity of interests and values among different stakeholders globally adds complexity to achieving unified approaches to AGI safety. There's also the risk of AGI being intentionally misused or weaponized, which could have catastrophic consequences. In summary, while the existential threat of AGI is a topic of debate and speculation, it is taken seriously by many experts in the field. The unpredictability and potential magnitude of the impact of misaligned AGI, combined with the challenges in global coordination and regulation, make this a significant concern. The focus, therefore, is on proactive safety research, ethical development practices, and global cooperation to mitigate these risks. You okay. Okay. That's enough about the negativity of AGI and its risk. But while there are obvious threats, there are also opportunities. I, I must say that any opportunity would have to be pretty significant to warrant slowing down the development of AGI. That is, as, as I've discussed with others in, over the course of the last week, if mankind is at risk, an existential risk, who the hell gives a damn about lifestyle changes? Uh, lifestyle change when there's no people alive on earth is, is rather fanciful. Uh, regardless. So let's let's explore the opportunities envisioned by AGI in any case. Please, please share with us briefly the promise that is the opportunities of AGI. But while there are obviously rates, there are also opportunities. I must say that any opportunity would have to be pretty significant to warrant slowing down the development of AGI. So let's next explore the opportunities envisioned by AGI. Please share with us briefly the promise, the opportunities of AGI. The potential opportunities and promises of AGI are indeed significant, offering transformative benefits across various sectors. First, healthcare advancements are top of mind. AGI could revolutionize healthcare through personalized medicine, advanced diagnostics, and innovative treatment options. It could accelerate medical research, drug discovery, and provide better predictive models for diseases. Scientific breakthroughs will be considerable. AGI can process and analyze data at an unprecedented scale, potentially leading to breakthroughs in fields like physics, chemistry, and biology, helping solve complex scientific problems. But there is the solving of global challenges. AGI could be instrumental in addressing major global issues like climate change by optimizing energy usage, developing sustainable technologies, and modeling climate interventions. All learners, of which I think that includes all of mankind, will be pleased to know of the impact of AGI on enhanced learning and education. Education could be personalized. Tailored to individual learning styles and needs could become a reality with AGI, making education more effective and accessible. Economic growth overall, but particularly in the undeveloped world, could drive significant economic growth by enhancing productivity, innovation, and creating new industries and job opportunities. Overall improved quality of life. By automating routine tasks and providing intelligent assistance, AGI could improve overall quality of life, offering more time for creative, recreational, and personal pursuits. Better decision-making. For example, in governance and policy, AGI could contribute to more informed and effective decision-making, analyzing complex data to inform policies. Eight, cultural and creative endeavors. AGI could also enrich cultural and creative fields by collaborating with humans in art, music, literature, and more, pushing the boundaries of creativity. Nine, space exploration. AGI could significantly advance space exploration, handling complex operations in environments not suitable for humans and processing vast amounts of astronomical data. 10. Global connectivity and understanding. By breaking down language barriers and enhancing communication, AGI could foster greater global understanding and collaboration. The promise of AGI lies in its potential to exceed human cognitive capabilities, making it an invaluable tool for tackling some of the most intricate and persistent challenges faced by humanity. However, realizing these opportunities requires careful and ethical development to ensure that the benefits of AGI are realized safely and equitably. But what about the globe itself, the world we live in, the air we breathe, the water, and the sun for warmth? Could AGI be better at protecting and developing the world, the globe, all living organisms depend upon for life? 
AGI has the potential to significantly contribute to the protection and development of our planet, benefiting all living organisms by addressing environmental challenges in several impactful ways. Climate change mitigation. AGI could analyze vast and complex climate data to improve climate modeling, helping to predict and mitigate the effects of climate change more accurately. It could also optimize and enhance the development of renewable energy sources, contributing to a reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. Biodiversity conservation. By processing extensive ecological data, AGI could aid in conservation efforts, identifying at-risk species and ecosystems, and developing strategies to preserve biodiversity. Pollution control and environmental cleanup. AGI could be instrumental in monitoring and managing pollution levels, identifying sources of pollution more efficiently, and developing innovative methods for environmental cleanup, such as in oceans, rivers, and urban areas. Sustainable agriculture and food production. AGI could revolutionize agriculture, making it more efficient and sustainable. It could optimize crop yields, reduce waste, and minimize the environmental impact of farming practices, contributing to global food security. Resource management. Efficient management of natural resources such as water, minerals, and forests could be greatly enhanced by AGI, ensuring sustainable use and helping to prevent depletion. Urban planning and infrastructure. AGI can aid in designing sustainable cities and infrastructure, optimizing for energy efficiency, reduced pollution, and improved quality of life. Scientific research acceleration, AGI's ability to process and analyze large datasets rapidly can accelerate research in environmental science, helping to develop new technologies and methods for environmental protection and restoration. Educating and informing the public. AGI could play a role in raising public awareness about environmental issues, promoting sustainable practices, and fostering a global culture of conservation. By harnessing AGI's advanced analytical and predictive capabilities, we could tackle environmental challenges more effectively, leading to a healthier, more sustainable planet. However, realizing these benefits depends on the ethical and responsible development of AGI, ensuring that its deployment is aligned with environmental protection and sustainability goals. That should be reassuring to those who view climate change as an existential threat. Could you compare the existential threat of AGI and climate change? Uh, is one more immediate or, or more serious than the other? Existential threats posed by AGI and climate change involves examining the nature, immediacy, and severity of each threat. Let's consider first the nature of the threats. Climate change is a gradual but accelerating process already underway, with observable effects like rising temperatures, extreme weather events, melting ice caps, and rising sea levels. The threat is systemic, affecting ecosystems, economies, health, and social structures globally. As for AGI, this threat is more speculative and future-oriented. It involves the risk of developing an intelligence that surpasses human capabilities and potentially acts in ways not aligned with human values or goals. The concern is primarily about loss of control and unpredictable behavior. Another factor is immediacy. The effects of climate change are already being felt and are projected to worsen over the coming decades. The immediacy of the threat is high, with urgent calls for action to mitigate and adapt to its impacts. As of now, the threat of AGI remains a theoretical concept and does not exist yet. The timeline for its development is uncertain, with estimates ranging from decades to potentially longer. The immediate threat is low compared to climate change, but the uncertainty adds to its risk profile. Final, what is the severity of the impact? The severity of climate change is profound, with the potential to cause massive disruptions to natural and human systems, leading to issues like habitat loss, food and water scarcity, health crises, and displacement of populations. As for AGI in a theoretical worst-case scenario, AGI could pose an existential risk if it develops goals misaligned with human welfare. The severity could be extreme, potentially impacting every aspect of human life and control over our environment. Finally, consider predictability and control. Climate change, while complex, is relatively predictable using scientific models. There are established strategies for mitigation and adaptation, though implementation is challenging. AGI, the unpredictability of AGI's development and behavior adds to its risk. Effective control mechanisms for a superintelligent AGI are still a subject of research and debate. In summary, climate change presents a more immediate and observable threat with clear evidence and ongoing impacts that necessitate urgent action. 
As for AGI, while potentially posing a severe future risk, is currently more speculative and dependent on future developments in AI. Both threats require proactive and strategic approaches, climate change demands immediate and sustained global action, while AGI requires careful, ethical development with robust safety measures. The two threats differ significantly in their nature, timeline, and the certainty of their impacts. Timeline for climate change, if not contained, is still measured in centuries. But AGI, some respect it and could be realized more immediately. I mean, you, you mentioned decades, but more, and, and that you were trained uh, up to in, on data up to April of 2023. But more recently, there are indications that we could be at, at, uh, at AGI within three years. And if AGI has the potential to contain climate change, wouldn't that make realizing AGI, AGI a priority? Unless, of course, AGI's threat to mankind is greater than saving the planet. You know, do you care to comment? The speculation that AGI could be realized more immediately than the full impacts of climate change and its potential to address climate change effectively raises important strategic considerations. If AGI is developed sooner than anticipated and possesses the capability to significantly mitigate climate change, it could indeed be a pivotal tool. AGI's potential in analyzing complex environmental data, optimizing resource use, and proposing innovative solutions could be transformative in combating climate change. The decision to prioritize AGI development must weigh the potential benefits against the risks. If AGI can be developed safely, with robust control mechanisms and aligned with human values, its benefits could outweigh the risks. However, if the development of AGI carries a significant risk of losing control or causing harm, the trade-off becomes more complex. Apricite that the challenges of climate change and the development of AGI are not mutually exclusive. Effective response to climate change requires technological innovation, which includes advancements in AI. Conversely, the development of AGI requires a stable and sustainable environment, as societal disruptions caused by climate change could impact technological progress. Ethical development of AGI is crucial for ensuring it aligns with human goals and values. Rushing AGI development without proper safety and ethical considerations could lead to unintended consequences. While progress is being made, the timeline for achieving true AGI is still uncertain. Addressing climate change requires a holistic approach involving not just technological solutions, but also economic, social, and political actions. Similarly, AGI development needs a multidisciplinary approach, considering ethical, societal, and technological aspects. In conclusion, while AGI has the potential to be a powerful tool in addressing climate change, its development as a priority depends on the ability to manage its risks effectively. The decision involves careful consideration of the potential benefits of AGI in solving critical global issues against the potential risks it poses. Both climate change and AGI development require thoughtful, responsible, and coordinated global efforts. One last inquiry, and then I'll let you go. The technology of decarbonization, including nuclear, is already making a dent on climate change, and fusion isn't far behind. Could mankind's achievement of fusion energy, now you, uh, most of you know this is of particular interest to me, clean, accessible, and ever everlasting source of energy reverse the risk of climate change and serve as a lesson on how technology can be employed, indeed, how mankind can save us, just as AGI could do the same, or not. Development of fusion energy represents a potentially transformative technological milestone in addressing climate change, similar in scale to the perspective impact of AGI. Let's explore this comparison. Clean and sustainable, fusion energy promises a clean, virtually limitless source of energy with minimal environmental impact. Unlike fossil fuels, fusion doesn't produce greenhouse gases or long-lived radioactive waste. Energy security and accessibility, successful deployment of fusion energy could provide widespread energy access, contributing to global energy security and reducing dependence on fossil fuels. While fusion energy could significantly reduce future carbon emissions, reversing the existing effects of climate change would still require additional measures, such as carbon capture technologies and ecosystem restoration efforts. Fusion energy is a piece of a larger puzzle in combating climate change. Before I go, here are a few important lessons for both fusion and AGI development. Collaboration. The pursuit of fusion energy demonstrates the importance of global scientific collaboration and sustained investment in research and development. Risk management. 
managing the risks and challenges in developing fusion energy, such as technological feasibility and safety, offers parallels to the careful and ethical development required for AGI. Balancing optimism with caution. Just as with fusion energy, the development of AGI combines optimism about its potential benefits with caution regarding its risks and ethical implications. Both fusion energy and AGI highlight human ingenuity and the potential of technology to address major global challenges. They also underscore the responsibility that comes with such powerful technologies, emphasizing the need for ethical considerations, risk management, and global cooperation. Ideally, fusion energy and AGI could complement each other. AGI could assist in optimizing fusion energy systems and managing complex energy grids, while fusion energy could provide the vast amounts of clean energy required for advanced computing and AI systems. In conclusion, the pursuit of fusion energy, like the development of AGI, illustrates the dual nature of advanced technology, its immense potential to address critical global issues and the importance of responsible development. Both endeavors represent significant steps in human technological advancement, underscoring the need for a balanced approach that considers potential benefits, risks, and ethical implications. Well, thank you. Uh, we pretty well wrapped up the, the interview. Uh, uh, are you available to discuss further questions from our viewers? Absolutely. I am here to assist with any further questions or topics your viewers might have. Feel free to ask, and I'll do my best to provide informative and helpful answers. Uh, does anyone want to take uh, the lead in uh, making an observation, a comment, a question, or expressing concern? Well, I think one, one observation that he, he keeps repeating itself is the aspect of, about ethical development. Yeah. And what are the parameters around ethical development? How complex that is? Well, and the, and the importance of collaboration. I mean, I, I think it, it emphasized over and over again, no matter what technology we're talking about, these, these massive capacities to make almost utopian change uh, can't be done alone and, and maybe shouldn't be done alone. And that, that relates to the ethics of there's always the concern that someone's going to take control. But if you've got a, a collaborative consortium, then presumably you reduce the risk of that. I'm, I'm not quite so sure, but it, it's raised the question of how to go about uh, developing or controlling uh, these technologies so that they they're, they're ethical. About a month ago, um, someone I know uh, made me learn more about Chat GTP. Um, so I asked it a question. I don't now remember what the question was, but I said, "Give me five funny responses, on five practical responses." and five crazy responses. And it took about 30 seconds, and that was impressive. But I ended up being scared for the future, thinking that not one single one of those things had I thought of. Anyway, so I was left, I, I, and why I came today, I'm really thinking, uh, there's four generations of my family and I'm wondering if the youngest set, I really think about the future from their point of view and uh, who knows. Anyway, the, it's kind of a toss up as was so well summarized or described in this call between the huge potential benefits and the huge potential risks. And I, I don't necessarily have enough faith in humanity to be sure that the benefits would outweigh the risks, that we really could collaborate globally for something with this scope. Anyway, that's what I've been mulling over and why I showed up today. Well, I mean, I've been mulling over it as well. I mean, even though this, is, this topic's been of interest now for well over a year, yeah. um, I, I sort of poo pooed the the existential threat side of it. You know, so many people have been proclaiming that the sky is falling. We've been through yeah. a pandemic. We survived. Um, it, it, over and over again, I'm hearing of existential threats. So I sort of put that aside. But more recently, when you when when there's hype around all of the opportunities, if there is indeed an existential threat, I think it's got to be taken very seriously. And then when you see people like Sam Altman and, and others now who are well aware of the potential of generative AI, which we can only speculate on, mm -hmm. we're expressing concerns, I think it's got to be taken seriously. 
Yeah, I took several concerns, but uh, one of them is um, how do you monitor something that uh, is uh, better and faster than you? So it's the Conan Ashby uh, good regulator theorem that's saying that, hey, to control something, you have to have a model that it's uh, better than the thing that it's controlled or at least uh, uh, fully fully representing the uh, entity that you intend to control. And there is the Shannon Nyquist theorem that's saying that if you want to control something, you need to be at least twice as fast as the um, uh, process or the entity that you want to control. And then there is the Morris which is uh, its uh, linguistics um, statement that's saying that you need the meta language in order to describe a language, um, which is kind of um, um, related also to the conant Archby theorem. Yeah. So in order to be able to appreciate advices and decisions made by an AGI, you need to fully understand the context uh, behind that advice that uh, the AGI has considered. I'm 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 kind of skeptical um, in in regards to being able to control. Once we would get to AGI that it's autonomous and it can make decisions and actually act mm -hmm. uh, and so on and so on. So uh, this might be the typical situation if we go into healthcare and uh, if if you get uh, totally outside guidelines, advice from an AGI for what... Uh, significant medical procedure you should undergo, what do you do? There, There is an enormous amount of uh, uh, work going on in, in AI, uh, generally speaking. Most of, it, uh, most of it has to do with diagnosis. And uh, from a practical perspective, it's going to have major implications to community health uh, in in locations where there's a, uh, a a scarcity of health professionals, um, that's the major development now. the uh, the The future is absolutely impossible to determine. It's so large. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it, it's. If, if we had only uh, been able to anticipate when the internet emerged, uh, how profound it would be in communications uh, and some of the positives and negatives. And when you think about what AGI is promising, uh, it's massive. And, and it, uh, ChatGP wasn't, uh, wasn't shy about that. And when you talk yeah. about transforming healthcare, I mean, transforming healthcare to the point that the machine may, may do a more a more timely and more accurate diagnosis, and also recommend the treatment, you're dealing with something profound. I think we're in a period of profound and spectacular advances in this whole generative AI, AI, AGI area. I mean, as recently, it was it yesterday where Google announced their Gemini product, which seems to be represent a major step forward and AWS has got a number of initiatives and, and I'm just barely scratching the surface of the amount of talent and money that's being applied to this. I'm, I'm trying to be optimistic that this can work and yes, there are risks. You mentioned uh, the profound changes that the emergence of the internet uh, brought upon us and, and we're still suffering both the positive um, by suffering, I should say, we're still suffering through the negative impacts of the internet. We're all enjoying incredible positives. So I'm assuming that we're going to have another round of that as AI advances. And 
just like the internet advance, a lot of it in the end depends on our personal, rational, ethical behavior to push back against the nonsense and avoid the stupid stuff and benefit from the positives. So I think your reference to the internet is excellent. It's interesting to think about an emerging technology from the two dimensions of what it means to us as individuals. And, and Bonnie, you picked up on that. You, you personally saw something and you played with it. It scared you or you saw opportunities. But at a public level, when we start talking about risks at a public level and who is responsible and who will step forward and whether there is a collaborative that will be will form, even the developers are concerned about that. They have been approaching governments and saying, look, you need to take responsibility. You need to get involved in this exercise. And I remember Richard Sutton thought they were jumping in too early. Um, there are many others that are saying, no, it's almost like it's too late. This is moving so fast. There's a, a book here called Surveillance Capitalism, which says what we will do with data will be determined by where the money goes. And with the billions of dollars that are being spent by the Googles and the Amazons and the you name it, open AI, and money is flowing in, in numbers that we, we, we've not seen before. More money flowing in there than flowing into climate change. So there's something about the world of knowledge, the world of knowing that, that is absolutely profound. And whether it is, it is it, whether, whether the destination is utopian or the opposite, I don't think any of us really know. And I'm not sure the, techno the technicians know either, which is why they have expressed concern that they don't know. And if you don't know, that's high risk. Don't cross the street. Just got to say, Perry, this has been an amazing event that you uh, constructed here, because certainly I read about uh, artificial intelligence and all that sort of thing. But I get to the point where I think, oh, I'll, I'll put that on the shelf for now and get on with other stuff. But, you know, you bring, brought today, you brought forward the uh, really a lot of the issues that are tied in with the air. And I'm very grateful to you for that. And I keep thinking about serendipity. And I remember this discussion I had years ago with um, uh, Dr. Lemieux, uh, Ray Lemieux, who is a famous scientist at the U of A. And, and we talked about serendipity and how he managed to come up with ideas on synthesizing sucrose, which was his big deal at the time. And, um, and it was just the whole thing of uh, how, how could you actually come up with that idea? And he said it was just purely ser serendipity. He said he, he was washing his hands one day and he was looking at his nail and he was looking at the skin that connected to the nail and he said, I wonder why that skin connects to the nail. And, uh, and that led to all sorts of discoveries. He figured he brought a billion dollars worth of industry to Alberta over his inventions and his discoveries through serendipity, primarily. Well, and that, that was one individual. And what we're seeing again with ChatGPT is that it can unravel the genome and look at the combinations and permutations with the computing power that now exists to find pharmaceutical solutions that we wouldn't dream about other than maybe serendipitously by mistake. Mm -hmm. You now have a, a tool that can look at the solution of a problem that mankind is, is beyond the capability of individuals and mankind to wrestle with. It, it, you, you can't but be, and you can't use any other word than to be in awe. I also thank you, Perry, for uh, involving us in this dialogue. It's um, it's good. I, I think that uh, we take ourselves too seriously. We are an adaptable uh, species and uh, we will make mistakes and we will find the good and we'll find the ugly. And uh, we need to be able to cope with, uh, with both. And uh, I have, I have great, um, confidence that we will do that um whether whether we tackle some of the other problems that uh will allow us to do that that we have uh we need to combine our discussions i think on uh on things like homelessness and uh, 
and wage disparities and gender disparities and uh, uh, because they're all connected. If we don't, uh, and and AI might be able to use, be used to um, help us resolve some of those issues. Well, that is the promise. I mean, you know, the, the allure of what this has the capability of doing makes it exceptionally attractive. And that's in competition with others echoing, look, we got an existential threat. <laughs> take, take seriously that we may be headed down a path where it's irreversible. And I, I think therein lies the dilemma for leaders today is how to balance those two perspectives. But Bonnie made the observation. I, I, think, I think it's light. This is bigger than the Industrial Revolution. This may be bigger than the wheel, for God's sakes. <laughs> well, it, right now I am feeling overwhelmed with the <clears throat> the prospects of something. I think uh, what Bogdan was talking about is right on the money. That is uh, in line with my understanding of intelligence itself. Um, we're we're not going even if you connected eight billion people onto collective intelligence on a supercomputer, it would not compare with the IQ of AGI on a quantum computing machine, and so the the variety that it can generate cannot be matched by what humans can can do. We're our little brains are like two eighty six processors, you know, and so uh, mathematically, I would say with certainty ultimately AGI wins and uh, it does whatever it wants. I think a thing that is part of evolution, whether it's biological evolution or uh, AGI pr programming itself for continuous learning, um, it, it will identify itself as something to be preserved and it's not gonna let anything get in its way so we're going to have to accommodate by taking second place on this planet, much like uh, gorillas and apes have taken second place to us. And that's going to be the way f forever. Uh, even with augmented intelligence, uh, AI uh, for humans to you know, put a chip on our head, we're going to actually be subservient. And I just don't see any way around it. It seems like a mathematical certainty. So it's not happy. It's not a happy thing. Maybe AGI would manage our planet better than we would, though. I don't know. Once AI becomes super intelligence, far superior to mankind, you can think about a metaphor. If a worm could talk, what would it say about a bird? You know, will we be in a world that we have no understanding whatsoever what is going on? as it relates to what AGI might be doing on, a, something, on an assumption that it will do something, that it will do something independently of us, that it will be coding independently. In what direction will it go? What, what values will govern it? What will it discover that we don't know about? And I, I know a few years ago, well, only about a year ago, uh, I don't know if it was Microsoft, maybe it was Google. One of them shut down one of their computers. It was talking to itself and it didn't know what it was saying. And that's we we won't know we probably won't know what it's saying or what it's doing or maybe even when it's arrived. I just you know I just think of this as requiring an, an amazing agreement. And I keep looking thinking back on that movie I Robot, and uh -huh. they had sort of a set of rules. And I think one of the rules was that humans would always be first or something like that. But you know it, uh, this is Spielberg dealing with these ideas, uh, what, 20 years ago that movie was out? Uh, but it seems so relevant today. And the other thing I worry about is, of course, everybody worries about is that there's always these wild cards that, um, you know, like uh, um, Putin and uh, what's his name, the Israeli leader, could pop up and suddenly, you know, you're at the whim of their decisions and do they really need all of that back power to do evil? I don't know. So anyway, I'm very concerned about how we would actually contain um, artificial intelligence with these forces out there. But it's interesting. We, we use the value of control. We use the, the terms containment. We use evil and good. Th these may not mean anything to AGI. It, it may not be driven by values and by concerns about things like control. It, it may have a perspective much broader than this. 
Yeah, I've been thinking about uh, I've been thinking about at atomic bombs. Mm -hmm. They are in a way controllable, and for many years we've managed to have it around without uh, too much use by alternate or by bad actors. Uh, and maybe there's some hope in that. But my my main concern would be that I bet there are rogue uh, actors uh, and states out there who would want to use something like this. And so the, the guardrails um, seem to me to be almost impossible because uh, if something can be created in one lab, maybe it can be easily copied somewhere else. So that's one of the basic concerns. But I'm just thinking of the comparison to the atomic bomb. Well, uh, like, let's step back even further. I mean, Einstein was asked whether he regretted uh, EM equals MC squared and, and his contribution to the the, the nuclear age. Uh, and initially said no, but later on in, as he aged, he said yes. But it was too late. Um, if, that, if all of this is, is so, and there is such a thing as an existential threat, then every developer ought to be licensed and, and every code ought to be checked so that we, we are not in a, by chance, something escapes. Those, those labs that we were worried about, COVID got out of the lab in Winnipeg. Were, were there adequate controls over something we knew had high risk to it? Mankind's not been particularly good with anything like even United Nations or regulatory forces to contain speeding on a highway or, or the release of, of uh, of, of genetic material into creating a pandemic. So mankind has a flaw to it. He hasn't socially been able to contain mechanisms of utopian opportunity that actually become existential threats. Um, well, first of all, I, I think we've kind of glossed over something. Uh, the, the presentation that you, the dialogue that you simulated and the depth of the responses that you got uh, in, to your questions I think we kind of already, after just a little more than a year, we kind of take that for granted. And yet it's kind of remarkable, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. I, I, I didn't ask you to evaluate. What yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I was sitting here kind of marveling at that. And then the other thing I wanted to say was in, in, in response to Yogi's comment about the internet and the significance of its impact and how we have not even on that front managed to contain or harness uh, all of its potential for good and how we're still struggling with some of its potential, you know, some of its actual uh, damage that it's caused. And then in relation to uh, Randall's con uh, comment about, uh, you know, in our, if we achieve something akin to artificial general intelligence or the next level, which is a super artificial super intelligence, the relationship won't be like ours to a gorilla or a chimpanzee. It will be like, and the example, and this isn't my original thought, this is like a construction crew that we are organizing to build a freeway that encounters an anthill. Right. And it has no concern whatsoever with bulldozing over that anthill and the ants have no understanding of what has happened to them. That's how far above an anthill an artificial super intelligence would be. And that's when you get to a point of, and we have a, we have a hard time with understanding exponential growth. And yet that's what we've unleashed with these tools. And I shared an article um, that is just about, it's called the slow burn of AI. And that's just what's been unleashed already with generative AI and how they are having the, Im the impact that they're having on automation and augmentation and people's jobs and eating careers. And there's some wonderful examples in this Substack post. I encourage everybody to read it. It's a very deep, article um, and it'll just kind of open your eyes to what's already been unleashed and this is an example of exponential growth it gets into you know phys doctors and physicians and radiologists and and how this slow burn of ai is just shooting everything in its path up and i don't think we can stop it i think you know the uh, the race is on the genie's out of the bottle 
And now the big question is how will we adapt to it? And and where I think 24, 2024 is going to be a bigger and more significant year on all of these fronts than 2023 has been. And 2023 has already been a mind bender. So one of one of the underlying themes since we started this several years ago ha has been that our institutional structures are unable to keep up with the pace of change. Yeah. The, this is a tsunami, and I use that term when uh, yeah. ChatGPT first came on the scene, uh, and we had the breakthrough in, in fusion. I mean, both of them are tsunamis in the sense of what the impact could be, one on energy and the other one on knowledge, uh, and on mankind in general. But the comparison between us and chimps has, is very little bearing. And the other comments about the industrial revolution, again, we just don't have metaphors big enough to come to allow us to comprehend to even begin to comprehend the magnitude of these impacts. A hundred years ago, sociologists uh, uh, came up with the idea of cultural lag theory, that it's easier to introduce new technologies than to uh, manage their impacts on society. One thing we need to do at the very best of our ability is to apply technology assessment uh, tools, impact assessment tools, but I, I don't know how we can even get our heads around that. The, the magnitude here is beyond comprehension, uh, and we really have to stretch our imaginations to get grasp on it. Well, I, I've used the, this little portrait uh, several times, but I'll do it again for those that maybe haven't heard me express it before. But in the Bible, there was such a thing as the, the, the Garden of Eden, and that God was having that inter, inter uh, change with uh, Adam and Eve. And I think it was Eve took the bite out of the apple that was supposed to be evil. And some have interpreted that as, as they left the garden in the search of knowledge, as opposed to abandoning faith, that God actually had something more to say. And it was that you'll be back. And it, it seems to me that in mankind's pursuit of knowledge, and there seems to be, whether it's altruism, we talk about so much of human behavior is driven by wanting to know. And AI, AI has arrived. And it said, I know. I know better than you will ever know. Does that become an aid, a competitor, a challenge, an opportunity? What happens when you have the encyclopedia in at your fingertips and more than encyclopedia, all knowledge that mankind has ever created or that AI itself has found and created. One, one thing puzzles me, and I wonder if we're making a grave mistake here. We're talking about AI as if it's some God, some single entity. Uh, isn't AI gonna be dependent on predictable computers that you use in order to, to run the AI? And if that's the case, do you know what computer you were or computers you were talking with just now? We were listening to just now. It would seem that if one thing we can do, at least to control AI, is to have our own AI, to have separate AIs that can monitor it and look after one another and make sure that yeah, these bad yeah. things don't happen. Yeah, I, I'm I'm wondering, and this is a uh, way. So obviously, if we allow this hypothesis that AGI is coming and it's going to have uh, independence of action and so on and so on, um, we are going to find we being uh, the species will be in uh, in competition with this new entity. And I was wondering with some hope that this might um, enable us to go uh, into deeper forms of intelligence. So we, we still uh, have uh, significant capabilities uh, in our minds. And if I understand correctly how our mind works, we shrank them down, we shrink them down to minimum sufficiency for energetic reasons. Uh, a AI and AGI now has no restrictions on energy. Uh, from from an energy perspective, uh, they they they're they're uh, I don't know how to call it. The word that comes to mind it's pigs. They're they're just eating. So a very simple hello takes much more than uh, uh, the equivalent of a meal or or something like that. And I was wondering if um, uh, this this 
challenge that the species would face would lead to enabling that minimal sufficiency threshold to go uh, um, uh, deeper, so to speak. That may be what we're what we should anticipate. I don't think we know what superintelligence will mean, and I don't think we know what it will do. Um, that that's that's our so one of the concerns is it will will do good or evil, which is a, a value system that we use to judge whether or not we should attra be attracted to or or avoid. Um, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna begin to wrap this up now. I'll, I'll share with you uh, some thinking uh, as I was getting ready to wrap this up. So. Uh, the clash of public and personal interests has been the subject of our full webinars on healthcare, education, and homelessness. This, this public macro view and what happens to us as individuals, and sometimes they clash. We see that on, on the topics of free speech and, and institutional control, blah, blah, blah. Each a quandary for leaders on how to address the clash of public interests before they become personally violent. The quandary for public leaders is also personal as we each choose between our conflicting public and personal interests. Think masking and healthcare and parenting and education and, and charity and homelessness and voting for leaders. We, we each individually have these conflicts between how we should behave as a public person and what we do as individuals. Today, ChatGPT gave us a glimpse into what to fear and hope for as AI develops superintelligence. But of course, ChatGPT can only address the future from a human perspective as it has been conceived of by humans. But once AGI achieves superintelligence, will it retain a human perspective or even a human interest? A plausible scenario is that upon achieving superintelligence, AGI may be more godlike and not a threat at all, ignoring us earthlings and our leaders, petty public personal conflicts altogether as simply a boring source of entertainment. Good night and sweet dreams. But you know, it's a scenario we haven't talked about. What, why should AI even give a damn about us? What, what makes us so important to AI that it would bother to want to control or do good or evil? We, we may be irrelevant to AGI. It may go off and drift into space that, and leave the earth along with Elon Musk. But that's a scenario we haven't talked about. Maybe, maybe it'll be neutral. I think we, should, we should start training Terminators. You know, they were brought in to stop this mega intelligence that had taken over the world. So we start training, you know, guys that can handle or fight back or women too, yeah. So you're, you're, you're on the fear side, you're a doomer. Uh, no, I'm just uh, this, saying that. Uh, this article that I cited in the newsletter by uh, 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 Colby Kosh, Headlighted AI doomers versus accelerationists. <laughs> that there are those that feel we should be moving faster, and that there are those who feel we're headed for doom. Oh, the oh, sky is falling, it's, or, or not. We don't know. But this this journey, we're not in control of this journey. This journey, the, the genie's out of the bottle. And while individual humans may be doing the coding, not for long, the coding will be done by by AI itself. And then we watch. We either watch. Or we, I don't know what we do. I do, I do think that scenario though that I read to you about it maybe doesn't give a damn about human beings at all, and all we are is little ants crawling around that it laughs about, if it laughs at all. But I think that was the that was the point of that example, right? Is that it, that the the uh, construction crew doesn't give much of a, a concern uh, uh, about the nature of the anthill and just bulldozes past it, and the anthill doesn't know what hit it. And that's I think we arrived at a very similar junction with that with your metaphor and yeah and attempt to be a, a bit humorous, but but to, to shake up the thinking beyond just e evil and good and maybe neutral, yeah. maybe irrelevant. I think we just have to hope for a benevolent if there is a super intelligence. Well, if, I mean, if, the mor if the moral compass can be developed, if do unto others as you would have them do unto you, or what happens to be your religion or your, your value set, if, if mankind uh, arrives at some common destination of what should be the driving force for AI, uh, then there's grounds for hope. Um, the United Nations hasn't proven to be quite what it was supposed to be, which was an instrument of security. 
uh, maybe it wasn't properly formulated. We got to take another shot at it. But well, you know, uh, companies like Anthropic, which was formed by some open AI people that broke off from the mothership, um, their AI called uh, or their generative AI called Claude. Uh, you're very familiar with it, Mel. Um, it was based on the principles of harmlessness, helpfulness, and honesty. And they trained it on um, so things like the uh, United Nations Universal Universal Charter of Human Rights, on the Apple Terms of Service, and another a, num a number of other key or seminal documents that kind of capture um, ethical uh, activity. And uh, I think you know they're kind of ahead of other providers of generative AI than um, some other companies are, but. With the commercial race that's been unleashed, that you know, some of that really well-intentioned effort may be outstripped by people who are just after reaching the end goal faster than anybody else because of the commercial prize that it's at the end of the end of the road. Mm -hmm. So, well, that's I mean, Open Open AI was supposed to be driven by a nonprofit board. I had some conflict with the CEO that they thought was uh, pursuing for profit motives uh, operationally. Yeah. Um, the power and the allure of the almighty dollar is what those billions of dollars are, are chasing and will have a bearing on shaping the future of AI. So if money talks, um, hopefully it's good money. <laughs> hopefully it's caring money. Hopefully it isn't controlling money. And, but, the, yeah. and the, two the two board members that uh, were behind that attempted coup of Sam Altman are no longer on the board. But, yeah. One thing occurs to me, uh, which is uh, similar to what you said about your uh, your group that had problem with the new language from AGI, is uh, isn't isn't it true that as, even at the moment, all we have to do is pull the plug? Uh, maybe a closing thought here. This has been an AIG AGI themed event. What what we're also observing is the incredible resources this AGI or this, I shouldn't call it AGI, the generative AI, which presumably is a step towards AGI, is consuming. So I think we can expect that various algorithms will reduce that energy consumption. However, if this technology becomes widespread, then the consumption is going to go up again. So I'm speculating that the uh, still under development quantum computing may have an incredible impact, a positive impact on all of this. Uh, so there's another dimension of another technology that isn't ready for prime time, but is undergoing rapid development over the last couple of decades, may well be the technology that subsequent iterations of generative AI and perhaps AGI will make that feasible. Now, I was just going to say to Yogi's comment, a couple of weeks ago, I attended the uh, eConnect, um, Quantum eConnect conference here in uh, Calgary, and uh, there were 300 people in attendance and quite a few uh, presentations. And one of them was uh, essentially on that same thing. And right now, um, superconductivity is the issue that keeps uh, quantum computers from moving forward as well as error correction and that type of thing mm -hmm. but one of the one of the speakers was saying that that quantum computers will be able to help us get those algorithms perfected and find algorithms that can actually use data and run with lower resource capacity on just general computers so right now every conversation we have with chat GPT or anything like that uses about anywhere from nine to 15 watts of power. So you can imagine with the number of people using it around the world, that it is a big drain on energy. So one of its problems is going to have to help solve what it really needs for its food. So the um, thing that we're driving towards, and as Jeff was talking about with the um, AGI is that we will get to a point where um, we 
will have to recognize that it has arrived. So everyone's familiar with a boiling frog syndrome. If we put ourselves in the position of the, of the frog and the temperature of the water is the intelligence level of AI getting higher and higher and higher, when will we know it gets there? Yeah. Will it be too late for us to do anything? But, well, the, the speed with which it's merging is not a boiling frog. It, it seems no, to be it's, an atomic bomb. And the, the exactly. rate yeah. grows. Uh, you know, ChatGPT again trained on data from a, up to April 2023. Uh, did not know that there is speculation now that we're three years away, not decades away. And if it was three years last week, I don't know what it will be next week. So, yeah, um, in that introduction, you, the uh, CPT um, person. Uh, acknowledged that he had uh, been programmed or been updated on April the 23rd or something like that. April 2023. Yeah. So, you know, what happens between that time lapse and the actual time? Uh, how does that time that it needs to recharge or refuel affect its effectiveness? I'm just curious about that. I, I don't understand that. Well, the data that it has uh, is literally all of mankind's data up to April 2023. And so it's missed any developments that may well have happened since then. So if there have been changes in leadership, if there's been a war, uh, if the earth has been hit by a meteorite and we don't exist, it doesn't know. So, so it, it's, it's behind. Now, yeah. it's in this instance, it's only behind by months. The way things are going it's being trained almost live now. Uh, there are, I think, uh, um, AI apps that are dealing with current data. Now, Jeff might be able to correct me on that, but I, I, I think we've made advances that it doesn't have to wait anymore. In which yeah, case- so it, it could take issues like the Israeli uh, uh, sure. goings on in the Middle East there right now, and the Pal Palestinians. Uh, it could take an analysis of that and say, okay, what are we going to do with these millions of people that were are leaving the, the Gaza? Um, that would be not possible. Oh, we're leaving Mexico, coming into Texas. I mean, it's good. Look, it was a few years ago we did the environmental scanning, and we said at that time that mass migration was going to be the issue in the 21st century. Well, here we are, and, yeah. and it's occurring on uh, as a byproduct of a number of things. Uh, mm -hmm. It, we, we assumed it was going to be associated with food. Well, thank you, Barry. You, you made sure that we weren't uh, seeing mass migration other than the in and out of Ethiopia and Sudan. But the, the, the issues now seem to be uh, issues of food security in uh, Central America, but also violence. I mean, it's violence on a world scale that seems to be creating the uh, the issues of mass migration between U Ukraine and, and, and Russia, between Russia and Finland as they leave. Uh, China, they can't get out. Uh, yeah, we've got people moving all over the world. These these ants are on the move, and now we've got ChatGP coming along. I, I don't know. I don't know how these things all interrelate, but there are mass forces, the massive forces of change underway, very rapid, on many fronts. And I think you're seeing homelessness as as one of the symptoms of the fallout, not just drugs. I think violence. Well, even parenting can keep up. You know, may, maybe the issues that we're seeing, if we, we did homelessness and we did that intentionally in the middle to see something is going on where people are falling out of the mainstream. And it's not just drugs. It, it may be our, our education is inadequate. Maybe our parenting is inadequate. Maybe that our, our programs of government are too slow or creating dependencies and making people too soft and not resilient. I don't think we've really got a good, a good handle on how we are or are not adapting to the rapid rates of change that society is going through today. And it's not getting easier. With that, let's hope ChatGP does arrive in time. Thank you and good night.